Hi everyone, my name is Mary Cahoe. I am the Early Childhood Specialist at WPOPR, William Pega Old Post Road Elementary School, and I am so happy to be talking to you at the Early Childhood Summit today. We will be talking about play, why play is so important, and then also your role as a guardian in play so that your early learner is ready for school. That school readiness is so important with play. So let's get started. So my presentation for you today is called the value of play because play is something that is so valuable in your young child's life and especially in regards to school readiness and being ready for academic um, and social emotional success in school and beyond. So once again, I'm Mary Cahoe and I am so happy to be talking about this topic with you. So when you see this picture, you might think that the students are just playing, you know, they're just having fun. So I want you to think about what type of learning could be happening in this picture. Are the students learning at all? I'll give you a couple seconds to think about it. So in this picture, you might see students having this spontaneous fun. There's a lot of things around, but really what is happening is so much learning for these young children. So just a couple things that they are learning and is attention and focus. This little boy right here is learning to focus on a task that he is doing. He is putting two things on top of each other. He might not be able to sit and watch a screen forever, but he can manipulate those things and learn about using stamina to develop to finish a task after a while. They're learning about sharing and interacting with other students and other children and other adults around them. So you see this little girl right here. She is talking to the other little girl and they are learning about taking turns, passing things back and forth. They're also learning as they talk to each other and as they're sharing language. They're developing their vocabulary as they are talking about the things in front of them. Maybe they're saying the yellow school bus. It's time for school. We are going to learn all of those um, words, but they're also developing that language of the world around them. They're talking through everyday scenarios. They may be talking about the van on the road or about the airport, so they're building their language skills that help them for later reading, later writing, later storytelling, and that's crucial to their success. They're also learning hand-eye coordination and spatial awareness. They're learning about gravity and placing things on top of each other. Um, you know, they, they're learning how to line up those items and how to manipulate with their hands to put those things together. They're also learning math skills. You know, they're lining up objects and um, counting them and talking. This little boy might be counting how many tracks he needs to go around. So they're learning those math skills. They're also learning math skills of sorting. You see the yellow um, objects are all in one part and the orange tracks are all in one part. So they're learning how to classify or sort different items, which is a skill for life. And they're also learning self-esteem, that confidence piece. They are doing something all on their own that doesn't require an adult to help them, that doesn't require them to take in information and sit. Um, they're learning to be confident and to take charge of their own play and their own learning. So today's focus is all about that value of play. What is play? What does it mean to play as a child? And then why is it important in learning and school readiness? And then also as a guardian, what is my job in play? What role do I have when my child is playing? So you probably hear a lot about play. The buzz on play is all around, um, you know, and there's different quotes I'll have you look at here that are all about play and your child's success. You know, play is sometimes talked about, and this was Mr. Rogers, he said, you know, it's a relief from learning, it's fun, but it really is the learning that happens. And you might be hearing the buzz on play, but then you also, you know, kind of get these messages of, 
academics are so important. Um, learning the letters, learning the sounds, learning how to read is so important for our young learners and learning about math and numbers. But really, what is so important is that a child plays because when they play, they are able to build those early reading skills, those alphabet skills, those math skills as they, you know, hopscotch and count out their numbers or count the steps on the playground. Those are all play scenarios that set a child up for success. So that buzz on play is that even though in our modern society we have more screen time, more technology, it is important and it is crucial for our young children to have all of those experiences to play and to learn about the world around them on their own terms. So you think about what is play? What does it mean when a child is playing? So it has to be an activity that a child can interact with. They are not sitting passively watching an activity. They are interacting and they are taking charge in it. It's also spontaneous and fun. You might have heard the word free play because a child has choice and they are in control of what they're doing. Something really important with play is that it only requires the imagination. It is not about which fancy toys you have and it's actually better to have objects that can serve different purposes. It's not important to have, you know, a little play computer to practice computers. Um, you'll see in these pictures that a child has a box or a stick and they can pretend that box is a computer or pretend it's a spaceship and it's so many different things. So in order to strengthen our brain, it's important to have toys that are all sorts of different things and it does not require money or um, expensive fancy toys. And then also with play, that is how children learn about the world around them. They are interacting and they are learning about how scenarios work. So play is something that is an absolute must for our early learners to have school readiness. They need to have these experiences. So I do have a little video quick and it is about the background of play and I'm sure that you have moments of play in your life that you think about when you are younger that are fond memories of when you had this unstructured time too. So here we go. It's just one minute. Take a second and remember when you were young. Most of us remember summers that seemed like they might never end. We're all able to search our memories for examples of play from our own childhood. When I was a child, we spent our summer evenings playing kickball and hide and seek. We spent hours playing Little House on the Prairie, pretending we were mountain men until the dinner bell rang and we all ran home. Those activities allowed us to have fun without worrying about completing a task. We were able to choose to participate, giving us control over our lives at that moment in time. We could change the rules of the game if we all agree, and no one told us how to play. Children expand their knowledge of the world through play. Play is inseparable from childhood, and it may look unimportant or frivolous, like kids just having fun, but puppet shows, cheap rides with poo, and dress up all provide important learning opportunities. Free play helps children develop their social skills, language skills, cognitive skills, and develops their emotional well-being. Something children enjoy can provide them with skills that will prepare them for their futures. So if you think about academic readiness, you might not think of play, but play is that important step, that free play experience for your child. And we're going to get into just the different aspects of development that happen through play. So play does not just provide, you know, the social skills that we hear about when students are interacting. Even independent play, children playing by themselves, is crucial for different development. So you'll see here there's a lot of different domains or areas of development that are pushed through play. You know, you get that physical development. We're building our strong body when we are moving. We're able to build our coordination for later writing skills. You know, when I am manipulating objects, I am able to learn how to hold my pencil later. And even though I might be scribbling right now, later I'll be able to make those lines because I am strengthening those parts of my fingers. You know, they help us with our cognitive development of thinking about that sorting we were talking about, talking through or building our language or our literacy. Um, here they may be telling stories and then they're learning later that I can write those stories down. Or they may be pretending to write a story and later thinking about how they can read that story. 
And then also that emotional development piece, the self esteem development comes through play and our feelings when things fall over and we feel better and we try again. Those crucial experiences are part of play. And then also what everyone typically thinks about that social skills development that happens through play where we're taking turns and we're learning about different rules. We're learning about different social rules in the world. Um, even right now, you might notice um, when your child is playing, they might play something like grocery store and they say, you know, step back six feet, wear a mask because these are the things that they hear and they're playing and acting out those social parts of the world. So now if you look at this picture, it kind of is in a different light of all of this development that is happening through this play, this free play that's happening. All of these domains, um, the physical, the cognitive, their brains, their social skills, and then their emotions. So we're just going to go through an example of each because as you are at home or as you're out, you might see your child interacting in these ways when they play, and this will be something that you will notice um, as you go through now. So thinking about the social emotional development, um, those ways that your child is learning about themselves and about others around them. So here you might see a picture of it could be two siblings, two classmates. You'll notice that there there is not another adult around, so they're learning about responding to each other's feelings. Someone might knock over the other's black tower and they have to learn. Oh, you look sad. I didn't mean to knock it over for you. Let's fix it again. The adult is not telling them look you knocked over that black tower. So they're having that experience. And maybe if there is an adult, maybe they are helping guide um, that experience to happen, but they are not taking charge. Um, they're also learning about taking turns, um, going back and forth. And you might know as a guardian, if you have multiple children, they might need that structure at first of, oh, we learn about how to take turns and they might talk about it. But then they're learning through their play about, it's your turn, it's my turn to put a block on. They're also learning that understanding emotions piece of when I knock over my block tower, I'm a little sad, but I remember I can build it back up. So they're learning about their own emotions, but then also how to self regulate, how to choose things that make them feel better. And they're learning about that resilience so that, you know, our black tower doesn't fall and we cry for the rest of the day. Or I'm an adult and I get a parking ticket and now my whole entire day is ruined. So that crucial play step helps them learn for later in life. So that's our social emotional development that you might see when your child is playing. We also have that language development piece. So you'll see in this picture, these two little cutie pies are playing grocery store. You know, she's got the bag with her. We've got a cashier. They've got an apron um, and they might be talking through an everyday activity that they've already seen, but now they're creating that scenario in their mind. They might be saying, you know, Know, cash or card and they're using that vocabulary of what happens in the world um, now with you know the pandemic they might be saying you know step back six feet or are you wearing your mask um, and they're having those conversations and learning about language they're using those words and then like I said before they might be telling the stories now but then later in life they're learning about reading and writing those stories down and then also singing a nursery rhyme play is a huge part of play and development. So maybe your child in this situation is singing, you know, to market, to market, to buy a fat pig. And they are learning their language development, but they're also acting out what's happening. Um, and a lot of children learn through that singing and play. Physical development um, has two different kind of categories that you will notice your child doing when they are playing and they're building their physical development through this way. So we've got our gross motor skills and then we've got our fine motor skills. Our gross motor skills are our whole body, our big movements that we are developing, developing our strong muscles and body and strength. Um, when your child is running or when they're jumping and climbing, that is crucial play to build up their body and muscles and to learn how to move their body that they have. Um, and then also those fine motor skills, as we talked about a little bit with our blocks. Um, students need to be able to learn how to use the muscles in their fingers. They need to learn for later writing success how to hold things. So they might not be ready to hold a pencil and write yet because that, 
that's not developmental where they are, but they might be grasping little toys or little blocks, and that's important. Or they might be dressing a doll and playing with the buttons or playing with the buttons on their own shirt. Those are things that even though you see them doing those little bits of play, those things help them with later writing and reading skills, turning a page. And it may not look directly connected, but it is, and it's huge and crucial for your child to be ready for school success. You know, coloring, you might not see your child writing these full stories or writing these full words. It may look like a scribble, but they're learning how to move their hand on a paper and how to use those fine motor skills. Same thing with cutting or just moving all those small pieces in their day. Those little Legos are lining up figures that they love. So when you see your child doing these activities, they are promoting their fine motor and their gross motor skills. So during this year, um, I teach some classes to our kindergarten and pre-K students. And one thing I had them do, I gave them a bag of pom-poms and at home, I would have them line things up and you know point to each one because they were building their finger skills before they learned how to write. So those things are so crucial and you'll see your child doing these things and you'll go, ah, look, I noticed that they're moving those hand muscles. But then also that cognitive and that brain development. Here you'll see that these two children are playing with a water bowl and in that they might be learning about learning. They are learning to classify or sort objects. They might sort their green objects to one side or their big objects to another side. They're also learning about problem solving and they're learning learning about gravity, the world around them, cause and effect. You know, you're learning if I pour one cup like she's doing into the other cup, I don't have any water anymore. Where does it go? It doesn't stay there. So they're learning about how to interact and how to learn the world around them. They're making discoveries all on their own. And like I said again, this doesn't require those fancy toys. So if you look back at all of these developments, these are not things that require those fancy toys. Even though this is a grocery store setup, this could be the extra food boxes that you have at home, or students could just be using um, just cardboard boxes and pretending them, or blocks and pretending that they are food and different um, groceries. So as you'll see in these um, scenarios, these are things that happen in everyday life. And, you know, having a water bowl and playing with spoons and forks and, you know, little cups from home are things that are crucial for your child to have those play experiences and to get ready for school success. So you may be wondering what your role as a guardian is in play. And you might be saying, you know, Mary Cahoe, I cannot sit and play with my child all day. Um, I. I need them to be able to play on their own, and that is very important to note. There are times that you, you know, play along with your child and you engage in their play, and it's also important for your child to learn how to play independently and with others, and that independent play is very important. It is important for your child to have that time for them to work out skills and scenarios. So it's also not something that you have to build up into your day. You know, we are going to play dragons at two o'clock. It is something that happens in everyday moments while you're at the grocery store and singing a song or while you're at the dinner table telling a story and, you know, role playing out the big monster that's happening. Those are all play experiences that happen for your child. So your role is to find those play experiences in your child's day. So the two big things to remember with your own role as a guardian in play, time and space. Time to be able to play and space, giving your child space to be able to play on their own and develop their own skills. So time is a very big thing to be able to have your child have that uninterrupted, unstructured time in a variety of settings. So they need to be able to play outdoors and indoors to be able to learn about the world around them. And, um, you know, during the pandemic, we had virtual learning. And the biggest thing that we heard from parents and guardians was that their child would get excited about playing with 
something, but then they had to transition back into math or come back to their computer. And it is so important that the child has time to work out that play scenario, you know, to build a block tower and to make it all the way through. And that's not something that has to happen all the time. You know, you can say, I'm going to build this tower and we'll come back to it later. Let's leave it right here. But it's important, you know, in our overscheduled days, in our busy days, to make sure that that play gets time and is happening. And then also that space. Um, following your child's lead and joining them with play and supporting their play, but not taking over, um, allowing them to take risks. You'll see physical risks happening down there, but she is not, you know, holding the child's hands. She might be talking them through of, you know, it's okay to take risks, but I need you to look where you're going and use your hands. She's helping support her child through that play and then also respecting their space and as a coach so you know not taking control of the roles in play of the rules in play letting them allow themselves to express themselves so these are just some major points to think about um, with your role in play and different things that you can do you'll see here this is an outdoor play experience and then also an indoor play experiences um, joining in the play is something that we've talked about you know you'll see down here there is a guardian and they're holding up a phone and the child is learning so much from him because he might be having a full conversation and modeling that um, or he might be pretending to talk back and forth so he's joining in but he's not taking over saying you know let's call the pizza place and here I am and you know I need to control Control the play. He's following along with his child's lead or the child's lead. Also arousing curiosity, um, questioning the play is so awesome and so important for that school readiness and to have your child think deeper while they're playing. You might ask those questions, who, what, when, where are we? You know, your child might have two different little blocks and they're playing that they are at a restaurant. And you might say, who is that? Who are they to each other? Are they a family? Are they, you know, an uncle and a grandma? Who are they? And then where are they? What kind, type of restaurant are they at? Are they at Chick-fil-A? Are they at um, a fancy sit down restaurant? What's happening? Are they out for a birthday? So you might be asking those. And even though you're not giving the answers, you are allowing your child to develop their own world and their own story. And you're pushing them further than just we're at a grocery store or we're at a restaurant. You are allowing support to that play and so that leads us into support of um, not only that language support because you're providing those vocabulary words and pushing that further and understanding the world around them but then also as you saw um, that gross motor that physical support of allowing your child to take those physical risks but then also being there for that support of you know when I climb something, I keep my eyes forward and I get down hunched and um, I can learn how to be safe when I'm doing that and but not stopping your child or doing it for them. You know, there's a quote out there that says when you do it for me, I learn that I am not good enough, that it's not me. But when you allow me to do it, I learn. So that is a big piece of, you know, even your child struggling through cutting, you might say, oh, look, hold it and open it in and out, in and out those fine motor skills but you're not taking it and saying, oh, let me cut it for you because you seem like you're struggling. Um, presenting new challenges, kind of like we said before, making sure there's that outdoor, that indoor, that variety of settings that are happening. Um, even when you're playing, you know, how about you make your block tower taller? Let's see how tall we can make it. Can you make it 20 blocks? Um, how tall can you make it? Can you count those? Asking those questions, um, not taking over, but allowing the child to kind of present a new challenge themselves. They might come back at you and say, I can make it 40 blocks. Um, and they get excited about that. Um, and then also in our overscheduled, over technology world, making sure that you have time to be spontaneous and fun. Um, not saying, oh my gosh, now I have to fit in another thing in my day of play, making sure that um, you have that time to explore, but then also to enjoy, to enjoy your child's play, to enjoy watching them, enjoy joining in, um, but also have time for you as an adult while your child is playing and knowing that they are learning and they are learning those skills for crucial school readiness success. So you as a guardian are setting your child up for success when you are providing them the time and space to play 
we will see that as educators us in our partnership. It is absolutely important and it is awesome for your child to grow all of those areas of development. So I want to leave this quote to you um, as we end our time with talking about play. As you can see, play is something that is absolutely crucial to your child's experience. And here at Hartford County Public Schools, we are committed to being your partners in play and in school readiness to have those experiences um, so that we are ready to take on not only school, college and career readiness, but the world beyond after school and into a successful humanhood, adulthood. So I'm going to read this quote to you to leave us off about our young learners and what it means for them to play. So it says, I was not built to sit still, to keep my hands to myself, take turns, stand in line, or keep quiet all of the time. I need motion, novelty, adventure, and to engage the world with my whole body. Let me play. I'm learning all the time. So you as a guardian, just by being here, are absolutely the greatest partner in promoting play in your child's life and creating their whole body um, experiences to for success and for academics, their social, emotional, and then also their physical well-being. So once again, I am Mary Cahill. I'm an early childhood specialist. I work with um, our primary kids, our young kids as they come into school, and I see how much play affects our students as they come in and they're successful because they've had the social opportunities, the mental opportunities, the physical opportunities, and they feel that success that leads them through their schooling and the positive experiences. So I'm going to show you some other resources. We're so happy you're here today and we wanted to provide some follow up for you. On our Hartford County um, webpage, there is a whole early childhood section and in this section there is family and community support, there's mental and physical health support, and then also educational resources. So if you want to hear more, you can look on this page um, to learn all about school readiness and different resources we have because we are partners in providing those successful early experiences for your child. Um, we are so happy to have you at the Early Childhood Summit today. You will notice that there are a ton of different sessions and I will give you a hint. All of these sessions have to do with play. There is play in reading, there's play in writing, there's play in having that visual schedule in your day. So play is something that is crucial and will be a theme throughout all of these. Do you have an evaluation to hear more about your needs as we are partners at Harvard County in the early childhood area? We want to make sure that we are providing you as guardians with everything that you need for your early learner for their before school, that Thrive by Five um, environment, but then also as you come into school and we support you in that partnership in learning and in social emotional development. So once again, I am Mary Cahill. I'm the Early Childhood Specialist here at William Pekka Old Post Road, and it has been an absolute pleasure learning alongside of you about play um, and talking about these experiences of you as a guardian and you as a partner with us. So thank you very much, and it's been awesome. Bye.